So yeah. um, I guess we'll just start. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how uh, how you got started. Um, yeah. So you know, I've got a business partner, and we moved into the same neighborhood in Memphis uh, about 15 years ago, and got introduced to one another, um, and but found out we both like to jog. Um, exercise. So we started jogging together. He ha was in manufacturing, um, working for a Fortune 500 manufacturer, and I was in, had a residential, uh, a real estate technology company, kind of like a proprietary Zillow that we were doing work here in Memphis and regionally. And so um, he was buying rental houses on the side, and so we just had a lot of common interest as we talked. Um, and then so I started buying some rental houses on the side because I had a kind of a finance accounting background in running the business I was in. And so um, you, were doing that to, you were doing that both separately. Yeah, we were running on parallel tracks um, and and just kind of talking and, and, and again, just building a friendship, building a relationship and, and encouraging one another in our in our endeavors. Um, and, and then. Well, maybe 10 plus years ago, we decided, hey, why don't we try and buy a house together? Um, and so it was, we happened to do it at a tax sale because we had never bought a house at a tax sale. So we thought we'd share the risk um, by do, going in together. And, and that went well. So we bought another one and that went well. And we bought a couple more. And then we, we both kind of built up a portfolio for ourselves and we had our day, W 2 day job. So, um, we were kind of getting a little bit overwhelmed, but we knew we needed to get better. We knew we needed, you know, long-term professional management because we were buying hold folks, and we needed to generate some money to pay for some personnel. So we started a third-party management company okay. in 2009, real estate brokerage, and then eventually, um, I guess, I guess Dan retired from manufacturing and came over full time, and then eventually I did too. But somewhere along the way, we ended up having to start a maintenance company because as we continued to grow and scale our business, our, our chuck and a truck contractors, you know, just one man and a hammer weren't um, able to scale or weren't willing to scale their businesses. So we ended up having to put some uh, more controls around a maintenance and rehab renovation kind of side. So now we've got a brokerage, a brokerage property management company and a maintenance company that service all of our clients and all of the rental houses that we nice. buy it. We own and manage. So, okay. so we've gone through, we've gone from literally two guys um, doing everything to, you know, dozens of employees for thousands, you know, hundreds of clients, thousands of houses. So we've, we've gone through all the systemization of the business and growing it that it's, how many it, it, are you at right now, if you don't mind me asking? No, we manage maybe 25, 2600. Mm -hmm. Mostly single family homes, some some small apart, probably 400 small apartment complex units, you know, 50 plus, 50, you know, 10, five units to 50 units. Okay. And, and you own a good deal of those as well, right? We own it. Yeah. Yeah. We own a good chunk of those. We always, we're, we are our largest customer. We like to be our largest customer. Okay, that makes sense. And do you do you feel like are you moving in one way or another? Like, are you trying to kind of move towards more and more ownership, or are you trying to add more uh, more properties under management? Or are you just doing both simultaneously? Or uh, yeah, yeah, I would, yeah, all of the above. So both both simultaneously, as you know, because you you guys uh, own a lot of rental houses. I mean, you're limited because it's such a capital intensive business. So you can't you personally can't buy everything that you see. So it's not like we can just gobble up everything that's presented to us. So, um, despite wanting to, to <laughs> despite wanting, yeah, despite wanting to, and despite some people thinking that you can, you know, um, so we got, you know, like I said, hundreds of clients around the world who invest in Memphis. Um, so there are tons of opportunities for them. So yes, we're helping, we're helping those clients buy. We're occasionally buying for ourselves and, um, we're trying to add new management clients. And then on the, on the maintenance side, we've also set it up such that we do maintenance for other property management companies. Okay, yeah. So, so we are always looking to add, you know, other maintenance companies, or excuse me, other management companies that we can do maintenance for. So I can see, I mean, going from 
you know, two people really doing it individually by yourself and correct to uh, uh, managing uh, 2,500 units, some yours, some having all sorts of clients as well, both in maintenance and management. That uh, would be a complete mess. I'm assuming if you don't have yeah. a large number of systems. I guess I would I would start with what was the intent of building these systems? Was it was it just the need to do so, or was it like I need to get out in front of this? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. You just froze out, but now you're back. Okay. Good. Yeah. So, what was um, were you trying to get out in front of it, or, or was it just like I, we cannot keep up with all of these these demands and questions and, and keeping track of everything that kind of kind of made you have to systematize? Well, I mean, I'd say it, it was probably both mm -hmm. because we know we knew better. I mean, we're you know. We're both college educated, both worked for, you know, Fortune 500 companies in a previous life. So we've, we've seen and understood systems, but um, in the benefit of, of, of scale that you can, the throughput that you can get by having, having a system. Um, but it's so much harder to do when it's just yourself um, and you don't have, have that team or a framework necessarily to do that. Um, so okay, I would yeah, say you know, I would say it's both because we, we understood we understood we needed to do it, but when the rubber met the road, a lot of times we just took the easy way out and the, and the easy way out was, hey, this person has money, let them move into the house, you know, as opposed as far as far as a specific rental, um, as opposed to putting them through a thorough process of here's the here's the application, here's the background check, we're gonna call the landlord verifications. We're going to do a bunch of uh, income verification, and but over time we've, you know, we've learned the hard way on a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, both of, and we couldn't keep up, and we knew to scale and grow, we had to put the systems in place. I, you can't to to, pig, to piggyback it one, time, right? No, and to piggyback it, I really where the where the rubber I, again where the rubber met the road for us is once we started hiring employees. That's probably when we really realized how, how badly we needed systems. Because as long as Dan and I were doing everything ourselves, even if we were doing it differently every time, it was still us doing it, so it was okay. But as soon as we started trying to hand stuff off to other people and there wasn't a system to do it, that became a disaster because they couldn't read our minds. Their choices might not have been the choices we would have made. and. Um, that standard and consistency as far as the level of service, both to the renters, both to the um, the clients who we're managing for, and then to us as clients. That that was the impetus, I guess you would say, for the kind of here's yeah, why systems got to be there. The big the big change is when you can't do it yourself. You have to find a way to basically do work through yourself, do work through other people that you would want done yourself, the way you'd want done yourself. Um, I guess. Why yes, that's exactly describe right. that process? Well like, said. Was that? I'm sorry. What was that? They said. You no. Know, well said. Yeah. Very well said. Yeah. I think. Why don't you describe the process you went through when when you really started to go through systematizing, creating systems, policies, procedures? When you started to move from being just working yourself, shooting from the hip, to actually using, uh, you know, working through other people, uh, trying to create a a well system in order to. Uh, to do things the same way every time and not have to constantly reinvent the wheel. Yeah, so that was, um, um, unfortunately, I would say we didn't have a playbook. Mm -hmm. um, so we didn't, we didn't um, have uh, either a property management company we were trying to, to, to implement their system. We weren't part of a franchise. Um, we weren't part of a trade association um, that gave us a lot of information. So we were um, always looking and trying to find some resources um, as well as implement it on, on our own and to use utilize um, the employees who were who were working with us. So since so so it's been an evolution over over 10 years. Um, and we've we've come across standard resources, you know, like uh, EMF as far as a business book, Traction as far as a business book, 
Um, Work the System by Sam Carpenter is a great book about putting systems in place. Um, so we, we got those, but those are more big picture, and they say, all right, here's how you get your general you know, principles, here's how you get your standard operating procedures and your policies. Um, so we kind of learned that conceptually. Then, man, too far into the process, again, wishing we had had something like this earlier, we found NARPM, the National Association of Residential Property Managers, and that would, they, they were able to help us with the um, in, more industry specific policies and procedures, leases, maintenance type stuff. They've got classes, they put on conferences, so we we're able to pull off a lot of good information from them. But as far, so those are some kind of big picture resources that we wish we had started with, but, but have kind of found along the way. As far as like from the ground up, that's kind of coming from the top down, from the ground up, it was more like, okay, what am I doing? You know, I'm taking a pad and a piece of paper saying, what am I doing to get this house rent ready? What am I doing to buy a house? What am I doing to um, uh, approve an applicant? What am I doing to generate monthly statements for owners at the end, end of the month? Um, and we, we would just write down, here's what we're doing uh, step by step and then kind of try to make that process as efficient and effective as possible over time um, to standardize it so we're getting the same outcome. So I guess, I guess with that, the last thing I'd say on that is, as we were writing it down line by line, I think the top of that page said, you know, here is the outcome we are going for. Therefore, therefore we do this. If this is your outcome, why don't you do step A, B, and C? You know, tweak step D, and then you can eliminate E and F. Yeah. And so you make a six-step process, a four-step process, a three-step process. So again, right. define an outcomes. It's interesting what you're saying. We started by seeing like how you do it, and like if it works right, then procedurize it, and then start trying to take out pieces that don't work or are unnecessary, instead of just like well. I've got this problem. I'm facing it. Let's let's go ahead and just do whatever I think I can do to make it work. And then if I face that problem again, you know, forget about it. But if I face that problem again, deal with it. But instead, take your solution to it. Uh, take the the outcome that you're trying to get, what you did there. Try to procedurize that, and then try to optimize that as the process goes on. Is that would yeah. that be a correct way to to describe how you how you try to build those systems? That, Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and not to say we didn't do it the other way as well as times of as, as something came up, fix it, you know, and, and then hope it doesn't hope it, we don't see that problem again. That is um, the standard way I think most people do. Yeah. 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 We, you know, so we, we've totally, <laughs> totally done, done that too, for sure. So um, because there, there's so many things going, going uh, around. And, and for us, a lot of it has been personnel dependent. So the, 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 Better, um, better the person. That's not the right term. Maybe the the better fit for that type of procedural role, or writing those SOPs, or or standardizing the business. If you can find somebody who naturally um, does that or is gifted in that area, then that helps so much more than trying to um, than somebody who, who just doesn't have that natural wiring. What would what would be a a good example to take maybe a one department maintenance or leasing or something like that and how how it worked before systematizing and then how you how you systematize that area and how it works now if, if that if that makes sense yeah i mean there it, it, we can do any any department um you know on the leasing front i mean we we literally put put a sign in the yard and have you know my cell phone or or my partner Dan's cell phone back in, in the beginning and talk through um, when they need it, what they're looking for, you know, and, and maybe, maybe not have an application. Um, definitely not doing the, the background checks, credit checks, income verification, landlord verification, you know, not doing any of that in the beginning and slowly but surely building those processes in of, hey, let's standardize our application. Let's put our application online. Let's tie our application to a, uh, a background check. 
let's tie that background check to the credit check and then let's let's get somebody in here with a checklist of all right did you get the complete application did you get a prior utility bill did you get the copy of the ID did you get this so there's a, a literally a checklist so we don't um, rent a property to an unqualified um, you know resident where in the past you know, again, a little bit kind of your term shooting from the hip, just trying to get somebody in there. Looked like a good fit, felt good, you know, so let's put them in there. And, and we got, you know, burned, a few times. burned, burned a few times. Yeah, yeah, you get burned a few times. So, so, <laughs> so you learn some lessons the hard way. Um, and so th that's one collections process, you know, similar. Yeah, yeah. You know, talk to, talk to, yeah. Tell me, what, like, what was your collections process before, and what was it after? Like, and and because that's that's the one that uh, I think a lot of people just shoot from the hip or, or just give up on. It. They don't even work, like just go to eviction and whatnot. Don't even try to. <laughs> yeah. So for us, it was it was way um, case by case, mm -hmm. and again dealing with here. Um, Here's the lease. Here's your rents due on this date. You know, it's the lease said late fee after this date, and then you know eviction at this date or or notice at this date. You know, but but again, we went back case by case. So it's like, okay, you didn't pay pay on the first. All right, we didn't we didn't enforce late fees, and then we would just try and start working with somebody, assuming and thinking, hey, if we could just get a little bit of money, that's better than having a house sitting vacant. Um, and that just put us in, in situations where we're waiting for tax time for people to get a, a refund back. Or, and there just was no, um, we, we, you know, our, our way of collecting at that point was, you know, going through the outstanding list and just divvying it up. And all right, you call these people, I'll call these people, you know, she'll call those folks. And so over time, as we one everybody's got a different payment plan everybody's got a different thing. everybody's got an absolute payment plan there was no standardization it, you know there was no treating people um equally so every everybody was different and so then yeah it was like all right let's start following the lease let's let's say that rent's due on the first let's implement late fees let's set a date for you know uh, uh, an eviction or some type of legal notice and so we started doing that and then we Again, but this is as we hired yeah. somebody to implement it, and it's like all of a sudden you realize that when you hire somebody, a like you said, to get that standard of what to do the same thing we would do, we needed to document what we what we expect. But also, that's what the um, the employee or somebody, if you're you know employing somebody to help you, they want that because they want to know they're doing a good job. They want to follow the the right procedure. Um, they expect you to give them direction. They don't expect to step in and have to, you know, kind of invent the wheel. Yeah, um, no, that makes that makes perfect sense. Um, one of the things I <clears throat> I think that systematizing that I'm kind of hearing here that this makes sense with us. I mean, my my brother uh, when he really he takes a, he oversees our management and is really big on, you know, if it's in the lease, that's kind of that is what it is. And, and right. And we can't we can't go around it. He kind of uses the lease as the enemy when talking to a tenant. So like, I, I, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. Um, but it, it seems like it's a more broadly speaking, standardization is one of the key things. I mean, yes. like, uh, would you say that 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 runs as a theme throughout all of your systemizing using the same, like the same sort of procedure for this, the same would materials for rehab, the same paint, like things like things along those lines? The more, the more it's it saying, yeah, yeah, yes. And um, standardizing the, the client. Mm -hmm as best we can because in in years past you, you we would take on a client um and well this client has a little bit of a different arrangement with us because they do their own maintenance or this person they place their own tenants or this person you know whatever exception we make and so all of a sudden you're you've got so many exceptions to your your rule so yes trying to get everything standardized again so you can just get more flowing through there one so you can get more flowing through there but two again it goes back to those employees the employees can't don't don't want to manage all of those exceptions they want to manage things the same way every time right. to be efficient what um let me talk a little bit about client because we don't we don't take on any any property management clients on that side okay how, how, 
uh, it sounds like you got you you want to have a client profile and be like we will accept people within this profile or not you can't have these same same with with tenants you can't that's right we're not, you no know, we're not going to allow you to you know paint the paint the walls in neon purple even, yeah even if you're right. providing the paint and doing the work um but is that i, I guess describe how you uh, i guess describe the same way with regards to uh, leasing, but with regards to uh, your your owner clients who wanted to manage wanted you to manage the properties and how you did it at first, and then how you went about systematizing and how you how you do it now. Yeah, so um, it's always a work in process, but but from from the beginning where you're trying to grow your business and take on anybody, you hate to turn anybody down because you're trying to grow, and then as you you learn as you kind of get up the curve, you, you know you you, you start making more strategic decisions of, um, and, and more discriminating in the good sense of the word, yeah. um, you know, discernment between what kind of tenants. So what kind well, of owners, owners makes sense for you or something or should go somewhere else. Yeah. Or say, Hey, we're just not the, a good fit for you because of you want to do your own maintenance. We're set up to do your maintenance. We're set up to lease your house for you. It just flows through our system that way. So if you want to do your own leasing, you might not be the right fit. If you want to do your own maintenance, you might not run it, be the right fit. If you have a lower standard of what you expect on a rent ready, make ready for a house, then that's going to be a problem because we expect this level of quality of home and the, the, the residents we're trying to attract expect this level of home. And you don't want to address that the way our standards of kind of to the crest core standard then that's going to be a that's going to pose a problem for us and the tenant and for you and it you know our employees and the tenant and you and that's that that makes it hard we like to say we're trying to make this whole process hassle free for the renter for the owner and for our employees because a lot of that seems to be about expectations if they, if they have the yep. wrong expectations they have to fit within a certain framework you basically you standardize the materials you use for rehab, you standardize the lease you use, you standardize the tenant profile, and you standardize the owner profile. Everything is standardized, yeah. That's right, yeah. And, there, and as you know, this is buy and hold real estate, re buy and hold residential real estate is a, is a multi-billion, trillion dollar business. So there are plenty of property managers out there. There are plenty of tenants out there who, who might fit somebody else. So if you, if you don't fit our standard, it's not like, we're the, we're, we've got a monopoly on that. So it's, you know, let's work together with people who we want to work with and that want to work with us. And then if not, no big deal. There's somebody across the street who will rent you a house or there's somebody across the street who will rent your house for you as a, you know, as a property management company. It, so it's, now, it's especially in real estate, the, the, the old customers always right thing seems to be a myth. The customer <laughs> needs to fit, right? It, that's a great, that's a great way to say it. Um, because you can't, build you can't scale this business because we're not because we're selling a service mm -hmm. we're not selling a widget of any kind you you're selling that service so the only way to do it is to make the service a widget so to speak <laughs> in the sense of it of it is this is my widget if you don't like this you're going to have to go this is my service you're going to have to go somewhere else because i can't have a different level of service for every single person yeah yeah that's a good way to you're, you're selling a you're selling, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. You're selling a, a, a television. If somebody wants a radio, they need to go buy something. You know, go somewhere else. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, how did you have any issues with getting your your staff or, or vendors or anything like that on board with this systematizing thing? I know some people, some just individuals, like to shoot from the hip. They like to do things their way. They don't want to get in line or, or whatnot. Did you have any issues doing that? Uh, getting your staff on board with the procedures and and you know following the, the rules and whatnot versus uh versus just going their own way type of thing yes <laughs> short answer <laughs> yes that answer. yeah yeah short yeah. answer yeah yeah all the way around man um it's it, it was especially hard for legacy tenants um you know to change the rules of the game so to speak tenants on or them. or both Ten, tenants for sure, mm -hmm. employees, it, it, it was very difficult whether they were legacy or new employees, um, if they weren't 
of that mindset and couldn't see the value in it. Uh, well, let me rephrase that. There's some people who came in and we needed them to build processes and, and, and some people just needed to be the ones to, to um, run the processes. And so when we had people who were more runners of processes trying to build processes, that was really, that didn't, that didn't work. So we've, we've, we've had a lot of trouble, um, or let me say that, we've had a lot, our biggest challenge has been with getting personnel to implement the policies and procedures, the right, you know, getting the right people in the right seats, doing the right things. Okay. Um, and so that is, has been a, a challenge. Has that been something that you've been able to teach and train, or has it generally been something that you've had to just be like, this is probably not the right job for you anymore, and we need to bring in a new new staff member yeah. to take over that? Un, un, unfortunately, it has been um, the latter there of where you know we had to bring in new staff in certain situations because the old staff just, it, it wasn't how, how they were. Yeah. The, the cloth from which they were cut. So all of a sudden, yeah. you know, they couldn't, they couldn't do it. It's maybe a bad way to put it, but you almost need to standardize your staff <laughs> or at least standardize the mindset within your staff that they, uh, they approach these issues from, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's, ex mindset. that's exact. I mean, I think that's exactly right. Um, it's one of those, what you know, what got you here won't get you there, kind of thing. So, the some of the folks who were in the trenches, you know, given given it their all, blood, sweat, and tears to get the business going, were not the ones who were able to then get it to the standardization to and through the standardization phase. So it's almost like they had to, you know, hand off the baton to the next <laughs> runner, to the next runner, you know? That's, so it's that's, like, that's an interesting way to put it. I, I, I don't know. Are you familiar with the name of that book, the book by that name? Uh, what got you here? won't get you there. I, just the name of, I have never read it. Okay. Is there, would you say there's something particularly with regards to the way you and your partner have managed your business and, and, and ran it where you had to like really say like my natural, predilections are to do it this way, but like really have to for, really make force yourself, but work hard to change the way that you manage and change the way that you operate your business in order to become more of a, a systematized, uh, a scaled way of doing it rather than a, you know, let's do this and then do this and then do this and kind of uh, uh, just lead everything, be, be too much of a micromanager and that kind of thing. Yes, it's been, it's been, it's been a challenge for both of us because we, both come from the mindset of, I mean, we get it conceptually and on paper and can read about it and talk about it. But at the end of the day, we're very action oriented, very results oriented. So we, we're, we try to be um, just, uh, I guess, expedious on just trying to, trying to get it done now. And so it has no. been a challenge. It's been a challenge to say, oh, no, we got to take a step back and make the, make this a, a sure foundation so you can scale it, scale it more. Um, so it has it has been hard for us, but we have brought in people around us to shore up our weaknesses. So okay, yeah. Yeah. To make our to make our weaknesses in that irrelevant. It's like, OK, well, I don't have to mess with that anymore because that's not my strength area. Let me play over here, you know, in, where I'm really good and let somebody else work on the systems or, or operating it. That's a good point. My, my father, for example, started a company is maybe could be good with accounting if you really try, <laughs> but he hates me. And so right. I bring the people to deal with that kind of thing. So yeah, I think finding people to, to cover your weaknesses as well and giving them more, it's, it's, it's an interesting, interesting balance because you got to give them authority, but you also got to make sure that they are staying within, uh, within the system, even if they help develop that system. Um, That's right. So it, it seems like it's, it's it, it, that is what kind of the constant balancing struggles to make sure that you give enough delegation and authority that you're not micromanaging because that pretty much eliminates any possibility of scaling. And, yeah. And it's system. It's like definitionally not systematizing if you're overseeing everything. But at the same time, you have to have. And that's kind of what you're talking about. The, you got to have the right people with the right systems mindset. And sometimes if they can't get it, they've got to hand off that baton. Yeah. And, and so you know, a, a lot of ways to kind of to you to that. It's like, if you, if you set the outcomes you want or the results you want, instead of micromanage and you're able to manage by the results and manage by exceptions, 
mm-hmm. as opposed to the micromanagement of making sure you're doing it this way every time. You assume when you standardize it, you don't have to micromanage it because the exceptions kind of flow to the top and everything else is running according to the um, to the procedure, to the way it's supposed to be run. Now, we, we, our next step and what we've been talking about um, is maybe at some point having some type of QC, quality control, quality assurance mm-hmm. function, internal audit type of function to make sure all the pos- processes and procedures are, are you know, mm-hmm. followed and done. We have, as, as you guys do, you know, we have legal obligations to the real estate commission um, and we we do those but in fair housing and all kinds of issues that come into play with what we do um, but they're not hardcore auditors and regulators on us like some of the other um, like a healthcare or banking where it might be a little more stringent and thought about how can we do that ourselves to continually to make sure that everything is being followed yeah that's um, that's def- that's I mean, even if you're not, you know, you're not being regulated. I mean, banking is ridiculous these days. But even if you're not being completely regulated, you want to. I mean, it's it's about keeping up with your own procedures and, and yep. that kind of thing. Um, right now, are you having like the own each department kind of oversee themselves and make sure that they're fine? Okay. Yeah, we are with 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 the manager. You know, so it 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 comes up and comes down. So you know, everybody's got their own. KPIs or key performance indicators. Everybody's got their monthly scorecard or their their rocks that they're presenting. So people that are flowing up, so everybody can manage by numbers. You know, you can't with the old. You can't manage what you can't measure, kind of thing. So, so we're trying to measure more and more so that people will know um, if they're doing a good job, where they need to work out, where the trouble is. You know, so you things they need to focus key on. Performance indicators, pretty uh, for for. It, do you use them for each department or just the departments that you, or are you kind of implementing them one at a time? Yeah, so we kind of implemented them one at a time, but every department has d- different kind of key, perform- key performance indicators, even in accounting, if it's like, hey, when are the bank accounts reconciled? When are the financial statements prepared? You know, how many errors are you? Certain dates kind of thing. Making sure they hit in certain dates and yeah, exactly like that. So everybody's got some type of key performance indicator. Um, or some type of metric to to make sure they're on task, um, as opposed to just thinking you know you're doing a good job or or, or what you should do. So I mean, so it can be that, everything from collection time to lease time to turnover time to number of calls to time to respond to all kinds of. Do you think key performance indicators are a pretty critical part of systematizing? I, I I think it goes hand in hand, absolutely. So okay. you got to again. I, that, that you can't manage what you can't measure to just get that on paper to say, here's where we're trying to go. F- defining that outcome and then then kind of the red, green, yellow, are you on, did you hit it? Are you almost there? Are you having trouble to, oh man, we're way behind or there's a big issue here with the red uh, to try and to yeah. try and see where this trouble areas are. So, and, and even if you don't know whether a number is good, like let's say you're doing a leasing agent, it's like percentage of applications you get, or percentage of right. return application, you get 30%. You don't know if that's good or bad, but you know that 31% is better and 29% is worse. <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. It's like at least know which direction to move into. So, yeah. To move in, that's right. So may, everything can become directional and you can look at trends and uh, all, all the way around. So absolutely, KPIs or key performance indicators have become a big part of what, you know, of the language of the comment, again, the language and, and the talk and hitting your number, what is your number, what's your scorecard, you know, everybody's got some type of something they're trying to hit. You know, kind of moving a little bit to what we were just talking about before this, yeah. I forgot to mention, but one of the important things you're talking about, it's not as regulated as otherwise, as other industries, but it's keeping with these systems and following these patterns is a good way to keep you out of trouble with the law too, or without the, or fair housing, because you're yep. not allowed to treat you know, two tenants differently, although probably a lot of small landlords do nothing malicious, just they're, just, right. you know, they're just like, oh, well, this day I felt good and I gave them a little <laughs> bit of break and this day I was upset because I was just in an argument with, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, the more, the more you stick to the same thing, the less trouble you have with, uh, with fair housing, with, with, you know, possibly getting trouble with treating two people differently, even though it's just a, a random, just the way you felt that day because you have a system yeah. to follow. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. 
What about technology? How have you utilized uh, technology in systematizing? Or, how, or I'm assuming you have, but how have you? Yeah, done? yeah. So, so, so that's great. Um, so, we have, we're big proponents of of, of technology, and we we kind of look at it as um, systems and tools and people. So the processes. Uh, and we've talked a lot about processes and procedures and documenting those um, and following them in checklists and and step by step. And then we've talked about the people and having the right people who are capable and able to do that. But we, but to your point, the last part of that of that stool, that three legged stool we have is the process, the systems, and the people. So the the, the um, uh, excuse me, the the tools, the tools, the process and system is the same thing. So the tools, and so tools can be technology. You know. It, 15 years ago, we were just getting in the business 16, 15, 16 years ago. But you know, 25 years ago, you didn't have cell phones, you didn't have cameras on your it was there weren't, to my knowledge, people who could manage single, you know, hundreds of single family homes because it was just not feasible. You drive but yourself crazy. You drive yourself <laughs> crazy, but now you've got a property management software that you can put your lease there, it can generate your tenant ledgers, you can store all your documents there. Um, you know, we started out using QuickBooks, oh, excuse me, started using Excel and Microsoft Word and then kind of moved to Google Sheets and then QuickBooks and then a property management software that took, took all of that. Um, and then, like I said, the advent of the cell phone and the camera so you can talk to tenants all the time, you can text them, you can talk to your contractor in your field, your tenants and your contractors can send, send you pictures of issues real quickly. Um, and uh, the, just all of the, the, the tools and technologies that continually make things scalable and more efficient, more, more faster to, um, to communicate. And you know, communication is such a big, big, big part of it, but also to automate things. So we try, as much as we try to systematize and put things off on other people to do, We've used a lot of we use we use a lot of virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. So we got people who work in India, people who work in the Philippines, who do a lot of data entry, clerical type of work. Mm -hmm. um, and what we are constantly trying to do is to not lure ourselves into hey, this, this, not only are they high quality of labor, but they're also a lower price point. And so our first, you know, the, the, our instinct is to just send them more work. But what we've had to step back and do is say, hey, is, are we giving them, are we just taking the easy way out and not automating something, you know, or, or just make, sending something that's manual that we should be automating, whatever that process is. It's simple and automated. If you can't automate it, but it's relatively, relatively simple. Send it out, a virtual assistant, and if it needs to be here, employees or vendors or contractors or that whatnot. But yeah, I mean, that makes sense that if you can have a computer program do it, that's the, that's the cheapest. If you and if it's a virtual system, it's just typing in data. That makes that's a little bit cheaper. So it's using it both to create policies, but also to reduce your costs. Uh, and and that's that that is sort of. I mean, we think of systems as a way to to facilitate growth, but it's also a way to make growth easier by reducing your costs because these various ways of doing it are well cheaper and more effective. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, is, is reducing cost absolutely key? And also, we really believe that systemized, systematizing as well as some types of outsource, as well as some types of automation, also improve quality. So you're reducing cost and improving quality at the same time, so making that, that margin even greater. So the, 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 the value to the, either whether it's a, re, a tenant, an employee, or a client, is, is better because it's, you know, it's just a higher quality product at a lower price. It, 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 I mean, it, it's kind of it kind of paraphrase our conversation so far. It sounds like you know, the more you you systematize, you're basically standardizing your inputs, and that way gives you a standardized output. So you get the same quality product to your uh, to your tenants to or whoever you're giving to whatever business you're in. But in our in our business, your tenants, or if you're selling properties, flipping them to your yeah. to your uh, buyers. Um, or even to your your lenders. If I mean, what we we uh, you know, I, I I don't know about you, but when I'm looking for a loan, I put together this this kind of elaborate lending request with all these pictures and all of our financial documents, send it over Dropbox and things like that. So, um, 
But yeah, I think I think the theme of systemization is sort of standardization, and um, correct. And and there's nothing more standard than a computer. So if you can automate it, go ahead and just automate it, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And that takes, but that takes, I mean, all of this, as you know, takes effort in rolling up your sleeves and it doesn't just happen on its own. I mean, uh, in what is it? Uh, necessity. The invention. Mother invention. Yes. yes. Necessity is the mother of invention. Right. So, so yes, there, there, and there we go. It's like you put yourself in, back yourself into a corner, you, you'll come out fighting some way which yeah. makes you get those processes and so we've done that sell, done that to ourselves several times over the years either we got mm -hmm. clients we committed to or in your in the example that you described you know you get bank loans you're committed to you got to figure it this thing out or you um, you know we like to talk about what we're doing it gives us another layer of accountability that hey if we're talking about something that just makes reinforces that we need to do this and not give up give up on a dream Absolutely. Um, I guess, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess, I guess the, the next question I have is, is what, what would you say was the biggest challenge in systematizing or if there, you have a good kind of story or example to give here of like something that you had to, that was, that was one of the biggest hurdles to overcome or the most difficult things or something like that comes to mind. You know, there have been, um, you know, countless examples of things in, in, in different way. Moving to the property management software was, was for us, um, a challenge to, to start putting everything in there. Um, com because it's, it's easy to have a conversation or to do something and unless it's kind of like, if you don't take notes, if you and I had met for lunch and had this conversation, if we hadn't recorded it on Skype or hadn't, you hadn't, you know, documented it through notes, it, in some ways it's like it never happened. Um, <laughs> it's funny. It's, it's what my brother says too. It's like, if it doesn't, if it's not in our, our, our property management software, it never happened. <laughs> that's right. And so for us, that, that that's the, I mean, that's exactly, yeah. you, you, man, your brother, we would get, we would get along well with them because, <laughs> because we feel the same way in the old days. It's like, all that stuff was just he said, she said. You know, this is the way I heard it. That's the way she heard it. Um, but as we put things in our property management software, and, and kind of like like your brother, if, if it's in the lease, you know, we've we've all agreed on it. So that's been a challenge, but it's also been the best thing for us. Um, similarly, um, we've had standard operating procedures, but they've they've been followed, you know, just because you create a stand, an SOP or standard operator procedure or a checklist or something, that, that's one thing. But actually using it day in and day out, time in and time out, that, that um, for us has also been another challenge is to get that consistency of use because um, somebody might have created that checklist and then, then, then take nice. some, of the e some of the easy way out. You know, again, it's harder for me to stop and and, and, and go through this checklist than it is just to kind of go with what's go with the flow. Yeah. How do you prevent, how do you prevent systems from atrophying once you've created them? Like what's, cause that, that is something that, that definitely ring, like that definitely rings true to me. I mean, we've created procedure manuals that just immediately once they're done, they start collecting dust. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what is, uh, what, how, how do you, how do you, uh, how are you, yeah. What, what, what process do you take to make sure that those, those procedure manuals uh, don't just get put in the bottom shelf and covered with other random documents and the rest and forgotten about until the next time you decide to make a procedure manual. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that, you're exactly right. I mean, and so some of the ways it's kind of like we talk about managing by exception to seeing why those things are, are bubbling up, um, having the right people in place, the right managers who, who are overseeing it and constantly updating it, and then having the right folks running that process who want to follow that process. Um, and as you know, just kind of like a little bit of that, that necessity is mother of invention in the sense of, Hey, if you, if you're trying to grow and you're trying to serve your clients and you're trying to serve your tenants and your employees, then they're going to continually push you to make sure those things are, are, are updated. Um, because you got to keep that same level of consistency, that standard of service, 
Um, that said, I mean, kind of to your point, it's like I don't know if we have ever kind of gone through and said, hey, on a monthly basis, we're going to read this procedure to make sure we're still doing it or on a quarterly basis, hey, is this still, it'll still right? Um, but that's probably not a bad, bad move either. Um, you talked about that quality control group that you're trying to get. Yes. Would that, would that probably do some things along these lines? Yeah, exactly. So part of what we part of what we just had this conversation earlier this week of have now we're moving to, as we as we're thinking about this QC role, and this is just a specific example of how it could work or somebody could implement it. It's like hey, if you have a QC person and a VA could easily service this for you, they say, all right, here's you know here's the checklist, and I'm going to go. I'm going to on Monday. I'm going to go through all the last week of leasing. On Tuesday, I'm going to go through the last week of collections. On Wednesday, I'm going to go through the last week of maintenance um, and working with the managers of those different groups to make sure everything procedurally is being followed or addressed. And if there needs to be update updates, you're, you're able to address them in a timely manner instead of a month, you know, a month, six months, a year from now. It's more like, okay, last week we did, you know, we realized this. Policy, this procedure was no longer applicable because there were some changes. I mean, we're always implementing, like y'all, always implementing stuff, trying to find new technologies, trying to find a better way to do things. No, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's a constant challenge. It's systematizing. You've said it a couple times, but I think it rings true. It's, it's never a finished process. You're never systematized. You're never standardized. You're never scaled. You're, it's, it's just... It's just uh, it's a mountain you are constantly climbing. It never it never quite get there, right? You just get you yeah. better, but you never get there. <laughs> I was gonna say, gosh, that that makes it sound sound daunting. Um, <laughs> no. so, it, 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 so, but yes, but you're right. I mean, you've never arrived. I mean, it's the it's it's just a constant um, that can constant and continuous improvement. Um, so yeah, pushing pushing it forward every day, trying to get better and trying to serve. And and especially when you're in the whether you're in in the rent just a rental business, renting sit, it's providing a, something to your tenants or providing it to you, your third party clients or flipping houses. I mean, the customer is king in the sense of they vote with their feet, right? So it's like if you're not getting better and if you're not serving them well, they can go across the street. Um, because there is somebody who is wanting to take your renter. There's somebody who's wanting to take your client, wanting to, you know, to, to, to take everything from you. Not necessarily in a malicious way, but, but in a way yeah, of just they're, they're out there. Get, they're out there getting better. You know, if you don't want to get better, somebody, young, there's, there's somebody hungrier than you. <laughs> if you were in Kansas City, I'd have to admit that I'd probably be trying to take your tennis as well. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Um, I, we're approaching an hour here. I, I, I yeah. again really appreciate your time. Is there anything else that you think would be worth throwing out there regarding systematizing and how you approach it, and what recommendations you would have for somebody who wants to take on such a task? Um, you know, again, resources. I mean, your book is going to be. It sounds like it's going to be a great resource. I mean, the articles you put out. You know, a lot of how we connected is because of the great articles you put on Bigger Pockets, and so where you're addressing things like this and talking about it. Um, those books I mentioned, uh, there's another one called The Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman, and he's got a, he's got a whole chapter on systems. Um, so the Personal MBA, what was the uh, Work the System was another one. What was Work the, the System by Sam Carpenter. Traction by Gino Wickman. Um, E-Myth by... Um, E-Myth is a classic. Yeah, the classic. I'm 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 blanking on it. Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and then another good one is the Four Disciplines of Execution um, by Franklin Covey, by um, Stephen Covey's son. I think his name's Stephen Covey too. Four Disciplines of Execution is a, a good one. It's more of kind of 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 scorecards, KPIs, holding yourself accountable on a weekly basis. Um, but that's a that's a key part of it. At once you standardize, you know, the, the thing that I think the whole point of this chapter which you know um, this is 20 percent I don't know where I heard this but I mean it's a whole 80 20 rule right like 20 percent of the of the tracks of the of the tra train tracks carry 80 percent of the freight mm -hmm. you know so it's kind of like this is this is like if you can build the processes you know it's going to take some effort but just those just that, that just those standard processes are going to carry 80% plus of all the day in, day out work. 
So it's worth it, um, and it, it to do it because you're just going to send them straight down that train tra train track all day, every day. Those processes, the exceptions, as opposed to trying to just manage it, everything as a case unto itself, like we have managed things in the past, whether it's renting a house as a process unto itself or, or dealing with each tenant is a process unto itself. We just can't do that. If you um, find gotta, those 20% that work great, systematize that and kind of let the 80% go. And then you take that 20% becomes closer to your hundred. And then you see yep. the 20% there and it's just, it just, it's kind of that scaling one step at a time, keep going higher, which is uh, never quite get there, but you get a lot better than you were. And, you look, yeah. like, you have that feeling of looking back. Like I cannot, I cannot believe I used to do things that way. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And we, and that's one of the things we say is like, we like, you know, we're, we're here and we're like, we're, we're never, we're going across here. We're never giving up, you know, mm -hmm. we're never giving back ground. We've always got this kind of floor that's pushing. So whether it's, you know, we used to go pick, we not only, we, we took cash for payments, we would go to people's houses and pick it up. You know, and so eventually we got to where we did no longer went to people's houses to pick up rent. They had to come to the office, but they could pay cash. Then we got to the point where you no longer could pay cash. You have to pay by check or money order. Then it was like, okay, now you can pay online. Now you can't pay in the office. You can drop off a check or mail it, but you can't physically come in. I mean, there's just all kinds of things where you can constantly move that, that bar higher and higher. Um, and you never go back because you can't believe that you used to be there. Um, and it, and I, I get with that, I would say just take a you know for for people who are just starting out in this or feel like where do I even start is just man just do a step just find a process that's either giving you trouble or it's either to me it's either something you do all the time or something that's giving you a ton of trouble and systematize that so that it makes it. Again, if it's one of those that's carrying eighty percent of the freight, well, that you get that down to a science. Or if it's one that it's giving you so much headache, then you at least get that down to science, and then you start going and tackle the next one because that the Rome wasn't built in a day. I mean, you can't pick up any of these books and and, and wave the you know wave the magic wand and presto, you've got this um, you know well-oiled machine. It just does, it just doesn't work, work that way. Unfortunately, man, it's Unfortunately, never ending process. It and uh, yeah, no, it's 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 amazing how long it takes to build uh, to build the infrastructure that 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 businesses can be built that you know can facilitate you know, managing twenty five hundred houses. But at the same time, I guess that that shouldn't be surprising if you think about it. That's a lot of houses to manage. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and part of and that's like, so part of it is like I mean, part of why we continue to take houses and try and grow is to help us get stronger and stronger and improve our processes because if we just stuck it stuck at you know two hundred houses, you know we could probably you, you, you we could probably do that and have a day job, you know, just do that on the side, and you wouldn't be as strong is if you keep pushing and pushing and pushing to get better and stronger, which helps for us again, we're our biggest customer. So that just helps our properties do better. And just, you know, just kind of a good thing. The virt kind of a virtuous cycle that just keeps yeah. spiraling up. Virtuous cycles are certainly the best cycles. Well, I think that's yeah. a good place to end it. Okay, okay, man. Thank you very much. Douglas. I yeah, you're welcome. You, uh, you uh, joining me here and um, yeah. And if anyone's listening here, I hope you've gotten a lot out of it and, yeah, uh, and thank you.